The story is about Sunio fighting for his dream to learn Mexican grammar at school abroad and he works at a diving shop. His life is normal until he meets Josie. What comes next will make you impressed. The story starts with Sunio doing his daily activity of diving, studying in school, and working in the diving shop. Mai asks Sunio about his activity during the summer break and invites him to go diving in the sea. But he rejects her because he is going to do a part-time job. Hayato also convinces him to do diving together. During the night when Sunio is walking, a girl sitting in a wheelchair suddenly launches off from the top of the road. With reflex, he catches her and they fall to the ground together. After that, they walk together and talk a little bit about Josie. They went to Josie's home and her grandmother invites Tsunio to come in. They have dinner together but Josie didn't like Tsunio's presence. As Tsunio wanted to leave, Josie's grandmother offered him a job to look out for Josie and do everything that she said. Tsunio then tells his friends about the job offer he got. Then, Sunio decided to go back to Josie's house and accept the offer, and his job start on that day too. Josie keeps requesting something that's not important like telling him to knees, count the meshes in the tatami mats, and even ask him to find four leaf clovers. With that behavior from Josie, Suno nags in front of his friends about how annoyed he is with her, but he will continue the job because he needs money. The next morning, Sunio meets with his professor. They talked about his scholarship and his essay on Turing patterns that were sent to a professor at Mexico City University by his professor. The story now shows Josie is in her imagination where everything is under the sea. She swims throughout the city which fills with various sea creatures, but suddenly her grandmother turns off her radio and she wakes up from her imagination. Sunio came to her house and found out that she is not at home. He went inside Josie's room and he was impressed with all of her drawings about the sea. Turns out, she was running away from home and Sunio found her near the train rails. She asks him to bring her to see the sea because she wanted to taste the seawater. He granted her request to see the sea even though it was far from her home. When they finally arrived at the seashore, Josie immediately jumps from her wheelchair and crawled to reach the sea. Sunio helps her by carrying her up and playing with her for a while. They were very happy about that and then after that, they headed home. When they arrived home, her grandmother scolded them because they lied and came back home late. The next day, they waited for her grandmother to take a nap and sneak outside together again to explore places she hadn't gone before. They eat ice cream, play on the homemade scooter, go to markets, going to playgrounds together. They even played in the park and went to the zoo to see several animals. Their relationship becomes closer than the first they meet. They went to the library to borrow some books. Josie hands over the books she wanted to borrow from the librarian with afraid. The librarian was named Kana. She was a shy person and nervous to talk with strangers. Sunio then tells her that she already made friends with Kana. After that, they went to the diving shop where Tsuno works. Hayato and Mai introduced themselves and were very impressed with her. But suddenly, Josie left the place and Tsunio run to catch up with her. She explained that she doesn't like that place, and they arguing each other. Josie's grandmother then tells Tsunio not to come anymore as requested by Josie. The next day, Tsunio received the good news that he got a scholarship to study abroad. While Josie goes to the library to read books, Kana asks her about Sunio. A child interrupts them and asks her to read the story in an illustrated book for the children. Because of her bad performance in reading, one by one of the children leave the place leaving only one child left. After that, she made a drawing of a mermaid palace for the child. Josie went home and continued her drawing. Sunio came into her home and went to her room to give her a gift. It was a lamp with a clarion angelfish shape. The clarion angelfish reminds him of his past when he is still a child. Suddenly, the lamp went off and Sunio tried to fix the lamp. They get into a romantic situation as the lamp turned on.
Josie's grandmother got confused seeing her dressing up and Tsunio came. They went outside together and tells her grandmother that the world isn't scary at all. Her grandmother was so happy and laugh it off as they leave. Sunio and Josie went to the zoo again to see a tiger. She wanted to see the scariest things with him because she needs something to hold on to if she got scared. Then, they walked together and talk about when she drew a picture of Mermaid Palace in the library. The children all loved it. So, that event motivated her to want to draw more and want to draw professionally as a job. Suddenly, Josie's grandmother passed away because of a bad heart. That makes Josie can't pay Tsunio wages anymore to become her servant. After that incident, Tsunio went diving with Mai and Hayato and tells them that Josie's grandmother passed away. They were shocked to hear it. Welfare services and facilities then came to Josie's house. They offer her a job and ask her to forget her dream to be an artist. Mai and Hayato went to Josie's house and meet her near the bridge. They tell her to free Tsunio from his job. They also tell her that Tsunio worked hard for his dream and he is going to study abroad. Then, Tsunio went to Josie's house and brings food. He noticed her room had already been cleaned and she threw all of her drawings. While Tsunio fixing her radio, Josie requests Tsunio to bring her to see the sea for the last time. She was very sad and sobbing after seeing the sea. She left and wanted to give up on her dream. Sunio chased after her to the road. Suddenly, Josie's wheelchair got stuck and Sunio rushes to help her. But, he got into a traffic accident and became unconscious. He was taken to the hospital and had surgery on his leg. The doctor explained that his right ankle is broken after he awakens from his unconscious. With the injury he has, it's hard to say whether it will heal or not. After the explanation from the doctor, Josie came to see Tsunio in his room but he asks her to leave. That made Josie feel sad and cried. Then, the professor also came to see Tsunio. But, he brings bad news saying that if Tsunio couldn't come to study abroad, then Tsunio will get replaced by another student. Tsunio felt hopeless after receiving a lot of pressure and the accident. He even throws his learning books into the trash bin. When Mai visits him, she noticed the book Tsunio threw and invites him to go to find some air. In that chance, Mai confesses how she feels all this time towards Tsunio. Tsunio didn't say a word about it, and they went back to the hospital. After that, Mai goes to Josie's house and knocks on the door to tell her the situation that Tsunio is facing right now. She also tells what she already did to Tsunio as an act of her love. Josie says that she also has a feeling for Tsunio and has a greater feeling toward him than Mai. Mai then asks her to show it if it is true when she left sobbing. She let Josie convince Tsunio about his dreams. Because when she confessed to Tsunio in the park earlier, she noticed from his reaction that he also has a feeling toward Josie. After thinking for a while, Josie then decided that she will make an illustrated book. She draw a tough day and night with the support from Kana to make the illustrated book. She asks how Yato helps to convince Sunio to go to the library without him knowing. When they arrived, they go inside the library. Josie is already in the position to tell the story of the illustrated book she made. She starts telling the story to the children with the support from Kana. It was about a mermaid turned into a human with the help of magic shells. The mermaid encounters a ferocious tiger and tries to run. Then a young man with white wings appears to help the mermaid. The young man has a dream to fly to a shiny sea far away where a family of bright orange fish swim. The mermaid and the young man became friends and went to many places together. When the seasons changed and spring arrived, the young man leave. The mermaid then encounters a ferocious tiger again. With sharp claws and bared fangs, the tiger pounced on the mermaid. Then, the young man came to save the mermaid again. But this time he was injured and the wings are broken. The mermaid took the magic shells and wished to save the young man. The young man's wounds healed but he lost his wings. The young man then says he can no longer reach the shiny sea. But, 
The mermaid convinced him saying he has larger wings in his heart that can fly anywhere. Then, the young man went to the shiny sea by boat fighting the storms and winds to reach his dreams. The young man finally reaches the shiny sea and starts swimming with the orange fish. But, the mermaid's leg turned back into fins and swam back into the deep blue sea. All of them started to give applause to Josie as she finished her storytelling. Sunio is so touched and motivated hearing her story. He then starts the treatment to heal his right leg. Josie, Mai, and Hayato are there to support him. Even though it was hard in the beginning, Sunio didn't lose hope and kept trying to reach the end of the line. He struggles to heal his right leg from day to day. Until one day, he manages to walk to the end of the line alone. Josie, Mai, and Hayato were very happy about it. Seeing that, Josie also wants to fight her fears alone. Sunio then tells Josie that he will be leaving the hospital soon. He asks her to pick him up when he leaves the hospital. Then, the day for Tsunio leaves arrived and he waits for Josie. Josie didn't show up to pick him up. So, he decided to leave the hospital and headed to Josie's house. When he arrived, he noticed that she is not at home. He immediately went to the library to ask where she is. But Kana said she haven't seen Josie too. Then, he informs his friends that Josie is missing. All of them trying to find Josie scattered all over the place. Until at the zoo, Sunio realized there is a wheelchair trail left behind. He then follows the trails. But, he lost the trails when he was at the road crossing. Suddenly, Josie got hit by a man chasing his dog. She lost control of her wheelchair and started to slide from the top of the road. Her wheelchair crashes and she was thrown from the wheelchair. Suddenly, Sunio catches her and falls together. He then tells her that he was running when panicking to find her although he had just left the hospital. He confessed to her that he loves her and then they kissed. The story ends with Sunio coming back from his study abroad and he meets Josie at the park. What a great story has brought. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for another video like this. Thanks for watching.